Welcome to the next installment of my video lecture series for international economics. And in this particular video lecture, I'm going to be taking a look at the law of one price. So make sure you realize some of the assumptions. First, that there's it's a competitive, there are competitive markets, that there are no transportation costs, and there are no official trade barriers in existence. Most importantly, make sure you remember the notion of no transportation costs and no official trade barriers. So what I'm going to do is give you an example to illustrate if prices differ between two countries for an identical product and no transportation costs hold and there are no official trade barriers. What is going to occur to cause that price difference to lessen and that the prices of those two, the product being produced in two different countries should eventually equal one another. So to elaborate on this, remember we're talking about a commodity that's being produced in the U.S., so the cost of it or the price of it is denominated in dollars, and the one that's being the same exact item being produced in Europe is denominated in euros. So in order to do this, we need this to convert this, we need to convert to a common currency. So we're going to need to use the exchange rate to convert that particular item into dollars, and then once we do that, they should equal one another. And if those assumptions that we made about the law of one price hold, if there's any differentials, those differentials should uh, mitigate. And at some point, the price of the two products should be equivalent to one another once we convert it to one currency. So let me give you an example. Say there's a commodity that's being produced in the United States and the price of it's equal to $100. And the same exact item is being produced in the Eurozone and it is the price of it is equal to 50 euros. And let's assume that the exchange rate is that it costs $1.50 to purchase a euro. So we can use that money to, we can use that exchange rate to convert the euro price of the item into a dollar price. So if we multiply the $1.50, multiply that to the 50 euros, we convert that into the dollar equivalent, which is $75. So we've converted what something the price of something was in euros to dollars and now we can compare that particular commodity in the US to in the eurozone but having it as a common current currency so we can see that that item the price of it is a hundred dollars in the United States and it's seventy five dollars in the eurozone so what's going to occur is that well if you think about this an individual could purchase the item in the eurozone for seventy five dollars and because there's no transportation costs and no barriers to entry, they can ship that item to the United States and sell it in the United States at a profit. Now, please note that they are not going to be selling it at $100 because that is the equilibrium price in the market in the United States, which means that the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded are equal to one another. So in order to induce additional sales, of the product, that item that you're purchasing in the Eurozone and shipping to the United States, you need to lower the price. So that will induce individuals to purchase that particular item because the market has been satiated at that $100. The only way you can induce additional purchases is to lower the price. What is going to be the impact in the Eurozone? Well, the impact in the Eurozone is that if you think about it, there's a supply of this product that is going into the market in the Eurozone. So individuals are purchasing that and that is leaking into the United States. So one way of looking at it is that the supply of that particular item is going to shrink and that that supply is going to leak over to the United States and it will cause the price to increase. Alternately, you can also look at it that there's an increase in the demand for this product, which is driving up the price. So this action of arbitrage, of buying this item in one area and riskously selling it in another area, is going to increase the price of the product where it's being purchased. You can all, either look at it as a decreasing in the supply or an increasing in demand, causing the price to increase. And as that product goes to the United States, the price must decrease in order to induce additional sales. This will continue to occur until this price differential disappears. Because individuals, as long as there's a price differential, even if it's only $15, individuals will purchase the item in the Eurozone and sell it in the United States for a profit. So this action of arbitrage 
will occur until the prices of these two products are equivalent to one another and therefore the law of one price will hold. You also have to realize that there are some shortcomings with this and if you take a look at the fact that the law of one price and that there are some shortcomings with it, realize that number one, transportation costs and restrictions on trade do exist. So we can account for the fact that there might not be an equivalency in the prices of items, and this could be attributed to transportation costs and the fact that there are trade barriers that increase the price. So any difference in the price could be attributed to transportation costs and barriers to entry. All right. Also, the fact that there might not be perfectly competitive markets. So this may further, you know, weaken any link in the one price that actually occurs. So make sure you're aware of that. Uh, also realize, number one, the assumptions that we talked about, zero transportation costs and zero barriers to entry. If we assume that that's the case, the law of one price should hold because arbitrage profits are available to individuals and they can purchase it in one area and sell it in another for a profit. And in doing so, that will decrease any price differential that exists. But also realize the shortcoming that the assumption of zero transportation costs and zero trade barriers, uh, those uh, might not be tenable, so that some price differential could exist because of the fact that transportation costs and barriers to entry, and also the fact that we might not have perfectly competitive marketplaces, and that might uh, weaken the link between prices of goods in different countries.